So yes, I did make 830% profit this month, just in 30 days trading the Forex market. It's not something that I'm going to recommend you do, but I'm going to, I'm making this video to show you what not to do and to also maybe be a starting point of what to do when trading the Forex market. Everybody wants to make big profit, right? That's what everybody's trying to do because we're retail traders. We don't have a lot of money to start with. Trading is difficult. It's a big gamble in some cases, and it's difficult to make big gains in a short amount of time. Um, and so there are so many people seeking this out and failing and throwing away so much money. And so in this video, I want to talk about the misconceptions, what's possible in, in Forex trading profits over the long term, uh, what's maybe possible in the short term, and how to balance the two, uh, because what you're doing right now is probably wrong. So here are my trading stats uh, posted on FX Blue. This is a third-party tracker for MT4. So you can see all the all the stats right in front of you. Uh, so this is a 2,168.84 uh, account, and you can see the account balance here at 2,168.84. So you can you you know it's it's a real account. Um, I have profited $3,671 and I've withdrawn about $2,500. So I've withdrawn my balance and also additional profit on top of that, which is how you should be trading accounts like this when it when you're pushing for high profit numbers. So 830% profit uh, total return uh, with just 21.6% drawdown overall. Uh, so my trade win percentage is 78.6%. Profit factor is quite high, 541 pips gained, and about two uh, trades per day on average, so uh, over the last 30 days. You can see I'm trading in quite a few different pairs, and uh, my worst month was 814, my worst week was 129, worst day 331. My average win is almost the same as my average loss, so uh, my win to uh, win, uh, win ratio is, is about one to one. Um, so I'm in trades pretty quickly. I don't like holding trades overnight. Um, I don't sleep very well uh, doing that, and I don't think it's necessary as well. So 3.7 hours, and my longest trade being 50 hours overall. So sometimes I will hold trades overnight. Um, for example, this, uh, this just last night I ended up holding a New Zealand Canadian dollar trade uh, for 30 pips uh, during the during the course of the night, hit profit. All right, so I'm going to show you now the uh, the account that I'm trading with and show you some of the trades that I take. Uh, now, this kind of trading is it shouldn't be really done at home, uh, especially after watching this video for the first time. Um, I'm going to probably, you know, release more videos like this uh, with my trading strategy, manual trading strategy. Uh, but I don't want you to try these things immediately. If you do, try them on a demo account or a, a small account and work with being consistent with your profit. I don't want you to try to try, try this without consistency first. You know, try for th two to three or upwards of six months of trading like this before you can really start to scale it in a big way like I'm doing right now. Okay, so uh, I'm going to be talking about um, some of the trades that I took, but also the overall uh, strategy that I'm using. So I'm looking for small pip gains of 10 to 30 pips uh, profit overall. And I am looking for small pips in a big move. Uh, so this means that uh, a move that maybe moves 100 pips or so, I'm only taking 10 to 30 pips. And you might think this is crazy that I'm not taking advantage, full advantage of the entire move. But I understand that the more pips that I try to try to take from a, a you know, a market move, uh, the more pips I'm probably going to lose. Um, it's harder to, it's more of a challenge to gain w uh, two pips rather than one. It's, uh, the more pips that you try for, the uh, the harder and more challenging that is. Okay, so I'm going to show you the overall trend movement on the Euro US dollar of the, over this past week. And I'm going to sh show you the the points in the market where I enter. Um, and it's not just with how the Euro-US dollar is looking. I, j I check that pair for the actual signal itself, 
And then I check also other euro pairs. So that means like the euro Japanese yen, the, uh, the euro Australian dollar, um, to see if the euro is also showing weakness on those pairs. And if it's the US dollar, I'm wanting to see if it's showing strength or weakness on other crosses as well to gain a better knowledge of where things are going. So that is a huge, huge tip that I hope that you guys can take into your own trading is that don't just look linear at one pair when you're trading. Look at the surrounding pairs to gain a better idea of what's going on in the bigger picture. Okay. So I've been trading for 15 years, as, as I keep saying in a lot of my videos, uh, to, to let people know that don't really try this at home because if you're following other individuals on YouTube or other places, a lot of people try to follow their trading ideas and knowledge and they don't succeed because they don't, they're not seeing it exactly the same thing. So for example, if I give you a trading system that, uh, that I'm profiting with, you may not actually profit using it because you're not using the same money management. You're not seeing exactly the same setups. Um, and so that's why it's really difficult to copy exactly how somebody is, is trading without a lot more knowledge of trading in general and also a lot more knowledge of the system or strategy that they're using. And sometimes that buying a, 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 a course from that individual that's profiting so much isn't enough because you're, it's not enough for you to actually profit on your own. Okay, so let's get into the market here. You can see that this is an uptrend, right? I don't need a, a, a trend indicator showing me, showing me that this is an, an uptrend. I can just tell by looking at the markets now uh, that this is an uptrend. Okay, so I do mostly naked trading in general uh, with my manual, uh, manual trading. And um, what I'm seeing here and what I'm looking for are reversals and trend continuation. So I, I trade both. I used to be only a strict... Uh, Trend, uh, counter trend trader. And that's what actually uh, sprouted the beginning of this algorithm, the Ranger EA version 2, which is available for people to try and use on my website right now. So this is a slower growing strategy that uses counter trend trading um, to profit in the market. And these are the slow running consistent strategies that I'm talking about uh, when, when trading in the market. This is something that you should be looking for, whether it's through the Ranger EA or something else in your manual trading. Look for slow, steady returns, and then see if how much the strategy can be uh, scaled up. And that's something that I did with my manual trading uh, with this strategy that I'm talking to you about today. <clears throat> okay, so the first setup that I'm looking for is this is the beginning of the week, right? So we pushed down, the euro US dollar fell down, then we had an engulfing candle. Now, this isn't just some standardized engulfing candle. Uh, that's the body is, is larger than the previous candle because that's how so many individuals and traders see it. Uh, you got to look at all the extra content behind this single candle setup or two candle setup. Um, we have a bunch of small little candles that happen, right? Which is, uh, and then we have this one that kind of engulfs all of them after that. Not is the, not only is the body in, in strong, um, but the body is higher than the previous candle, higher than the previous like mini candles. And the wick is lower than the previous candle and all the previous ones as well. And so not only did we have a bullish engulfing candle, but it also closed above the high of the previous candle. So that shows me that this is a really good potential can, uh, entry for a trend, a continuation on the upside. So I'm going to be entering my trade right here. All right, so what's confusing about this move is if I zoom in even further, you see this candle. You're thinking, oh, well, this is the, almost identical to one, one that you showed right here, right? It's got the wick. It's bearish. It's the body is closed lower than the previous open and even the body of uh, uh, even the low of the previous candle as well. And so you're thinking, well, that's probably going to it's going to move down now. Well, to be honest, my profit is so is not big is not that big that I'm going to be taking profit right up here, likely, um, and so I'll be closed out on this trade already. You're thinking, well, why not just hold it for the entire length? That's not what I do. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm not looking to hold trades overnight and for multiple hours. I just want to be run and done. 
basically. I don't want to hold, because the longer that I hold potential trades, the more stressful that is. So I want to be in and out. And so I use higher risk on each individual trade looking for a smaller amount so I can move on to the next opportunity. Okay, so this trade was had potential to move down at that point and did it a little bit, but it was canceled out or rejected right at the candle after that. Now this candle didn't close above the open, but it was really close, but the body of the candle was pretty full, meaning there was no uh, not a lot of wick on the top and uh, it closed pretty strong and there was a lot of wick on the bottom. So it's showing us that this is a rejection of the previous candle. So we can X that out and now we can even look for a second entry. Not the best one. I'm not sure if I would have taken this one, but it's possible that I would have looked at this and then saw this uh, this uh, follow-up candle, and I would have I would have likely entered on that one as well. Uh, but the bigger ones uh, that are sure bets, and I would have gotten a lot more risk on, uh, are as follows. So I uh, don't see anything here, nothing here. Um, I do see this candle. Now, if you're looking for trend continuations. In most cases, I'm looking for a dip and then a reversal candle or a, a continuation candle showing us that there's going to be uh, a move back up uh, in that trend. Uh, the, sometimes we can even take trades like this uh, where we have a uh, the wick of the candle is lower than the previous. The body of, of the candle is pretty big. It also ends pretty strong. And there is a, a pretty good opportunity for a, an entry on the upside there. Uh, and there's also a re-entry potential here uh, with this candle right there. We even had a little bit of a dip down and then this candle came up and it would be a good place to enter again. And then we have this one. So this one is where I'm looking at for the most. This is the kind of trade setup that I'm taking in most cases uh, because I want to see, uh, for especially when trend trading, I want to see a little bit of a dip and then I want to see a wick on the candle, right? I got that. I want to see a close, a strong close of the body, and I want to see it above the previous candle, and I want it to shoot up, up from there. And look at it, look what happened. <laughs> you know, not every setup is perfect, and it's really, it's going to be really difficult for you to. You're going to be thinking, oh my gosh, I could, I can just make a billion dollars just by using Ryan's strategy right here. It's a lot trickier than you think when it comes to live market, because when you're looking at the past tense, you're thinking, well, this is not that hard to do. Uh, but it's because you can see when what happens, because it's past tense, right? But when it's actually in the market at the time, that's a lot more difficult to really see what's what's uh, how the picture is going to pan out. Uh, so here I'm looking at this candle. So this is a rejection. So this goes into the counter trend area uh, that I was mentioning before. And this is on the one hour chart, by the way. And I'm looking at these candles. I'm seeing that market slowing down. I'm seeing more wicks at the top. And then I'm seeing a clear rejection. Uh, and the rejection it happened, it clo it, uh, the, I guess the wick of the, of the candle uh, was higher than any, any of the previous previous ones and the body of the candle closed strong above, below the previous candle open showing us not only an engulfing uh, bearish candle but also one that had a rejection um, and so that was a clear signal on the downside I think I was sleeping at the time so that's why I didn't end up taking that trade all right so uh, where you might be wondering well you you could hold on to this trade longer if it's such a good rejection right you could technically, but again, I'm going to probably close out my profit right about in this area, uh, somewhere in here. And the longest I'm going to hold on to, if I'm looking at the one hour candles, is I'm going to be, the longest I'm going to be holding is right there. Uh, but I'm likely going to be uh, cutting this, chart, this trade a lot shorter. I'm going to be looking at the lower time frames to see what's happening. I'm also going to be looking at the crosses of the euro and the US dollar to see what's happening on the crosses to give me hints of the strength of the movement uh, or the trade entry that I picked. Uh, so I'm going to see this and I'm going to see a wick here. Uh, I'm going to see, oh shoot, this is, this is not great. There's a big wick. The market moved down and it came back up. Probably not enough for me to close out the trade at that point. Uh, but if we're actually looking at the trade itself, uh, there was some movement in the initial entry, uh, but not enough for me to close out the trade there. Uh, I would have held it longer and likely uh, closed it out 
actually probably right here. If I'm looking at the actual candles on the 15 minute time frame, uh, that is a pretty good exit area uh, for that particular setup. So that's only about five pips. All right, the later entry I would have been looking for is the one right here. And you can even go down to the five minute time frame to see what's happening on that time frame to see where the candles, what the candlesticks are doing in there. No really good entry, uh, indications here. Uh, there wasn't one until right about here. Uh, so this trade it's set up, if you, you could have been spooked out by the the, the noise on the lower time frames, um, and I typically are am not going to get scared scared out by those lower time frames on such a good one hour setup like the one that you see here with the rejection. Um, so I'm likely not going to be looking at this lower time frames as much on that particular setup. Okay, so now I'm looking for a con uh, a trend continuation. I don't really see a ton. There's a, a minor one right here uh, set up with the small wick. Close the body be, uh, above the previous. Uh, not a ton of, of indication here. I would like this to close above the previous high for a better setup. Um, but still, nonetheless, a pretty good setup overall. Now, you might be thinking, oh, what about this candle? This bullish engulfing candle with the big wick. That looks like it, that you know the trend is going to continue. As you can see, it was kind of a fake out. It fell, it fell after that point. I'm not going to be entering on that one because the candle itself is too big uh, in comparison to the the previous ones. That is a a, a 20 pip candle. Um, so a lot of the the move it was in within that candle itself, and not a good enough entry for me. I want I don't I would have taken that trade or this candle if it was smaller. Um, and it, actually, what what if what's what happened? It was too much movement and it fell right after that. All right, so now I'm looking for uh, more setups, and I'm not seeing really anything. Uh, nothing here, nothing here, nothing in this area, nothing there. But then we have this here, where we have a wick, right, on this candle. We get another wick on this one. And you even get wicks on the bottom side, too. So there is there is a potential for something. There's something happening here. There's There is indecision. And so I'm looking at this particular area uh, for uh, somebody to make a decision and the market to de decide if it's going up or down. Okay, and I didn't get that until this candle showing me a a, a wick that's higher than the previous two candles, uh, and it's also matching the wicks of the previous, a, a bearish. Uh, en engulfing from the previous candle, closed below the opening of the previous and the uh, the low of the previous candle as well. So uh, really good setup, and you can see here I took that trade, ended up only closing out for about 10 pips. I'm conservative, high risk on the one trade. I want to be sure that I get the movement, and that's what happened, even though this moved about 40 pips. Okay, so the last one I'm going to be talking about in this video today. Uh, this is a, a pretty interesting one, and it's because we have two previous candles that were showing us that the market could move down, right? And this one is almost as good as this one, although I like this one better uh, because they showed me uh, more previous wicks. Uh, so the, the indecision making a final decision at that point, a much better setup. I think I was trading some other pairs at the time um, with that were showing me better setups than this one, and that's why I didn't enter there. Um, although this was uh, good for about uh, 20 pips uh, profit. Okay, uh, so the last trade I want to talk about is this one. So this bullish engulfing candle. Now there was a slight, a slight move down, and I'm seeing a lot of indecision. So a, a decision was made here that this was going to go down, right? But then we moved down, and then we had these candles in here that were showing more indecision. Wicks on the bottom, wicks on the top. So we're not really sure what's going to happen. And then this one happened. This one could have been a pretty big fake out, and I almost actually ended up taking this one here. But again, seeing better setups on other uh, on other pairs for a move down, and I, it, this would have been a, a a pretty small loss actually if I would have taken the trade on that candle. Uh, the loss would have been about 20 pips. Um, so you know it would have been roughly about 20% uh, if I took a one lot trade on that on that particular trade. Uh, but I would have made it back very quickly on the next entry. So these potential setups here were canceled out by this trade or this candle. Big wick, big body, 
near an indecision area, closed p confidently near the top, and there, it really didn't have much choice but to go up from there. Now I knew that there it could bounce up, and then have a wick on the top and then shoot back down. And I didn't want to be part of that, so I took a small amount, a small piece of a larger pie, as you can see here. Uh, I took about 12 pips, and it's still continuing to go. All right, so this is the beginning of how I've been trading over the last 30 days. That's how I've been able to profit 830% in a short amount of time with only 21% drawdown because the high accuracy of trading like this. Now, I don't recommend, again, you trading like this without a lot of practice, uh, without a lot of studying, without you know seeing this strategy more by me uh, on, in future videos. Um, and also using a lot lower risk before trying to scale it up because when you try to scale it up you're going to make mistakes um, you're going to get emotional and you're going to close out early the trades early um, and that's what comes with experience in the trading market if you don't have a lot of experience trading again i, I recommend looking for longer term strategies like the ranger uh, ea or something else um, and then in the meantime, practice on your manual trading strategies uh, or techniques to gain a better uh, hold of the market and how the markets move. Because you can't just look at one setup or one candlesticks or, or this and that. You need to look at the bigger picture. That includes the trend that's happening. That includes what's going on on the cross pairs that, uh, that um, include those same currencies. Like, for example, the euro in the US dollar. So start looking at other uh, major pairs to see where the strength is going. You could potentially use a strength meter like I have right here. Um, like right here showing me the strength of the Aussie dollar is the, the Aussie dollar is the, is the strongest and the US dollar is the weakest and you could use something like that to give you knowledge of where things are going with the pair that you're looking for that setup on okay so that is just a small hint uh, for those of you looking to make big profit on a, a forex trading account with not a lot of money but when it comes to succeeding in uh, pulling that off your chances are not great. And so it's better off for you to find a strategy that's lower risk um, or at least practice on trading lower risk because stats and longevity are so much more important than big profits. All right, see you guys next time.